go into the house of the Lord. Is anybody glad to be in the house of the Lord just one more time? Has he been good to anybody in this place? Clap your hands, all ye people. Shout unto God with a voice of triumph for the Lord our God is worthy to be praised. Oh, hallelujah. Anybody come with a little bit of love in your heart for our God, for our King of kings and Lord of lords, the one who can, the one who will, the one who does. Father, we honor you and be magnified your name. God, we come to lift you high in this place. God, we honor you. As we shout your name, receive our praises, receive our praises. As we love on you, receive our love, receive our love. And as we shout. You say, as we love, as we
nobody greater. Nobody greater. Can we take it up as one big choir? Say nobody greater. Nobody greater. Nobody greater. Nobody greater.
As you lift your hands and you declare, thank you, Jesus, that we all know the one that we call on. He's our provider. He's our healer. He's our protector. He's our redeemer. He's our savior. And his name is Jesus. And God, we bless your holy name. We thank you, Lord for being just who you are. Call the name of Jesus. He is our healer. Call the name of Jesus. He is our provider, yes. Call the name of Jesus. Our protector, call the name of Jesus. He is our deliverer. Yes. Oh.
protector Call the name of Jesus He is our deliverer We love to call him Jesus 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 Yes We love to call him Jesus 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 Can you say that with us? We love to call you Jesus, 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 Jesus. Oh, we love to call you Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Father, we love to call you Jesus, 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 Jesus. Oh, we love to call him Jesus, Jesus. There's a name that you can call on. The name is Jesus. I don't know if you've ever found yourself in trouble. Sometimes we used to scream, help! That's all I knew, that's the best I could do. But then I learned that there's a name that's above every name. Now I just say Jesus Be Because I heard that name is above every name Can I go a little deeper? I, I shout Jesus because I heard that if you're under demonic attack Demons tremble At the name of Jesus So when I find myself under weight, under pressure, under attack I shout Jesus And the enemy has to back up off of you See, there are moments when we have to flee temptation, but there are also moments when the enemy has to flee because he cannot do anything with the power of Jesus Christ. Are there any witnesses in here this morning that it just helped me shout Jesus' name one more time? Can we just say Jesus? Make the devil mad. Jesus. 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 God, we thank you for your mercy and grace. We thank you, God, that you have blessed us with the gift of Jesus Christ. Thank you, God, that you loved us so much that you gave your only begotten son so that we could have everlasting life. Now, God, as we come together the first Sunday, we come together to say to you, God, thank you. Thank you for what you have done. Thank you for what you're going to do. As we partake in these elements, God, this is not just something to do, an exercise or a ritual. It is a reminder. We do this remembering the sacrifice, the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ so that we could have eternal life. We're grateful, God. We say thank you in the mighty, matchless name of Jesus Christ. If you've been blessed, say amen. Amen, amen, amen. You may be seated. You, may be seated. you, you came in this morning and somebody may have greeted you at the door with some elements. If you need communion elements, just raise your hand right where you are and we will bring them to you. There, there are some people at home right now, right now, they, they, they're ready. Got their elements, their, their glass, I mean their elements. <laughs> and, and their bread. And Jesus says, as often as you do this, we should do this remembering him. In fact, we literally just celebrated the resurrection. Jesus says, this is my body broken for you. Take and eat, he says. Not yet, y'all. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Goodness <laughs> gracious. I'm, st I'm still teaching. Still teaching. I, I know it's early. I'm hungry too. Lord have mercy. Then he says, the cup, the new covenant of my blood. We do this remembering him. We, we just, I got to say this twice, 
just celebrated last Sunday the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Today we're going to partake of these elements remembering his sacrifice. Paul says it to us like this. He says, examine yourself. Not the person next to you. Not, not, not one of your friends or enemies. Not your spouse. Someone you may be dating. Your employer. You're not examining anybody else but you. He says so that we don't partake of this in an unworthy manner. In fact, Paul continues to say to us in his epistles, his letters he writes, live a life worthy of the gospel of Jesus Christ. He's not speaking about perfection. He's speaking about intention. That every day, everything we do, we should be intentional about walking according to the word of God and imitating Jesus Christ. And so as we partake in these elements, the bread or the wafer, this, this symbolizes Christ's body that was broken for you and I. So when we do this, don't just take this to get it over with. This symbolizes what we just preached and learned last week. His body was actually beaten. It was brutal to the point where he couldn't even carry the cross. And he did that for me. He did that for you, he did that for us. So when we partake of this, remember it should have been me. But God loved us so much, he sent his son in our place. Can we take, can we break, and we eat it all? But there's something about the blood. I heard that it never loses its power. I heard that it reaches the highest mountain. I heard that it flows to the lowest valley. Somebody say, the blood. Never. Somebody say, ever. Loses its power. So when we take the blood, as we learned last week, it is the blood of Jesus Christ that was shed for us. He says, this is the new covenant of my blood. He says, as often as you drink this, as often as you do this, do this remembering me. And so we partake of this understanding his blood was shed to atone for our sins. Can we lift this up and say, I'm covered? I'm covered. Take and drink ye all. God, we thank you for your love, your grace, your grace, and your mercy. We thank you, God, that you love us so much that you sent your only begotten son, Jesus Christ, who was sacrificed in our place. And God, we thank you that the blood is not just in effect today, but day to day. We thank you, God, that your blood reaches the highest mountain and flows to the lowest valley. Somebody say, the blood. God, we thank you for the blood. We thank you for the sacrifice. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. It's the blood. So y'all might as well stand and worship. Y'all might, might as well stand.
Somebody say the blood. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, we come on the first Sunday after Resurrection Sunday, praising your name, thanking you for what you've done for us, Lord. We will always remember what you did, what you're doing, and Lord, we're praising you for what you might do in the future. Lord, as we take communion and we had communion, we did it in unity, we did it as a family, and we do it loving you, thanking you with praise on our hearts, Lord. And Lord, we love you, we thank you, we say this prayer in the name of Jesus and all the blessed people of God said, amen, amen, amen. amen. Let's give the Lord a hand of praise and let's continue to praise him. It is offering time, amen. Did everybody have a good time last Sunday? The Resurrection Sunday, everybody have a good time? Amen, amen, and we learn. Well, praise the Lord, our offering, our giving scripture is one of the most, is one of the most popular or actually one of the most known scriptures probably in the Bible. John 3, 16. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever, that's why, believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. The two things is God does two things really well. Number one, loves and gives. As we prepare our hearts to give, God loves and God gives. We're never more like God than when we love and when we give. Can we have an amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. As you're preparing your very best gift, if you need an envelope, just lift your hands and Usher will bring one to you. As you're preparing that, there are three ways in which you can give. The first is all of you are joining us online. You can click it right now in the chat. There's a link that you can click on. Or everyone, you can always go to our website at faithfulcentral.com. You click on the give button. There'll be a drop down menu where you have an opportunity to tithe. You bring back to God what he's blessed you with. Hasn't God been good? Amen. And then you can do offering. And the second way in which you can give is you can text it. Test give to the number 833-321-3222. And the third way is you can mail it to us or you can drop it off. Our address is 333 West Florence Avenue, Inglewood, California, 90301. Amen. And then also, there are giving receptacles that are right at the doors. Let's pray over our offerings. Let's lift our hands. Maybe we're lifting our gifts. Let's wave those hands. They offered him a wave offering. Let's pray. God, we thank you so much for loving us. No matter what we do, you love us and you, and you bless us every day, Lord. And we come saying thank you. Thank you for the tangible gifts that you give to us that we bring back with joy in our hearts. And Lord, let us be good stewards over the time, the tender mercies that you bless us with every day. The talent, the skill that you give us the temple our bodies from the top of our heads to the tips of our toes, the treasure our finances, Lord. Let what we do be pleasing in your sight and let's be good stewards over that. And thank you for opening doors for us, Lord. Pray for anyone that is looking for a job right now, Lord, that you would open the door for them. Lord, the people that have jobs, Lord, continue to sustain us, Lord. And then Lord, us that are in the position to hire people, Lord, pray that we hire the right people, Lord. And that our businesses are blessed, and that we glorify you in every area of our lives. And we give you all the glory, all the honor. And we say this prayer in the name of Jesus. And all the blessed people of God said, amen, amen. And also know that we pray for you every day. We pray that God would open doors for you in the area of jobs, promotions, and new businesses. We call it job check. So far this year, this house has been blessed with over 230 new jobs and businesses. So... If you got a job in the last few weeks and you have not been counted, stand to your feet. If you got a job, you got a promotion, or you start a new business, stand to your feet. If you're joining us online, just type in the chat, I got a job, I got a promotion, I started a new business. All right, we're going to start right over here. We're at 230. You're at 231, right over there. 232, right over there behind her. 233, and then right there in the back, 234. Guess what I'm doing? We still counting. 
234. And by the way, if you're looking for a job, sit right over there. That seems like to be the area to be sitting in. And then right over here, 235 new jobs and businesses. And promotion. How many know God's in the blessing business? Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. Now I take a moment and acknowledge all of our guests slash new family members. If you're visiting with a family of champions, it's your first, your second, or your third time. Can you just wave at us, or you may stand, but just wave at us, just wave at us, just wave at us. <laughs> On behalf, we have a little baby waving. On behalf of Dr. John Paul Foster, First Lady Carmen, the entire family of champions, we want to welcome you here today. This is a Bible-based, spirit-led, Christ-centered church. We pray that you learn some. You come back again and again to visit with us. But wait, when you come back, you're no longer a guest. Now we consider you. See, you guys are getting it out. So let's give all our new family members a hand. Amen. And also, family, we have a lot of awesome things that are happening here at the Family of Champions. Let's look at a screen near you. loss that can leave us searching for solace and understanding. Faithful Central Bible Church invites you to a special grief and loss workshop, a gathering designed to offer strategies and tools you need to navigate these challenging times. Join us on Saturday, April 13th at 10 a.m. in the Champion Counseling Center located in the Trinity Building, Level C. Reserve your place in a journey of healing and rediscovery as we learn to cope with grief and loss together. For more information and to register, please visit our website. Are you ready to kick off the first mashup of 2024? Parents, mark your calendars as we continue to offer our young champions from first to 12th grade, a night filled with food, fun, and fellowship. Friday, April 12th at 6.30 p.m. right here at the Tabernacle. At the Family of Champions, we're all about creating moments where youth can connect, create, and celebrate community. We can't wait to see you there. Join Bishop Kenneth C. Ulmer and Kingdom Tours on a journey of discovery, heritage, and spiritual awakening. Embark on a 10-day exposition to the heart of South Africa from October 12th to the 21st. Walk in the footsteps of heroes on a tour that takes you through the struggle and triumphs for freedom. Experience a cultural village that breathes the essence of South African heritage. Encounter the gentle giants at an elephant sanctuary in Hartby Sport. The journey continues to Cape Town with an unforgettable visit to Robben Island, a testament to resilience and hope, a world heritage site where Nelson Mandela was once held. This isn't just a trip, it's a pilgrimage to the soul of a nation, a chance to explore, reflect, and grow. For more information, simply click on the link in the chat, scan the QR code on the screen, or visit faithfulcentral.com. Your path to a life-changing experience awaits. Secure your place with us and witness the transformative power of South Africa. Amen. How, how, many, how many of you have been to South Africa before? Just wave at me, wave at me. That's quite a lot of people. That's quite a lot of people. Praise God for them. Come on, y'all, help me praise God for them. It, if you want an opportunity to, to go to South Africa, it, it, it's, an, it's an amazing opportunity. But if you have an opportunity to go to South Africa with the bishop, Kenneth C. Omer, that's a whole different type of experience, family. So if you want to be a, a part of uh, th this trip, we got more information for you. They got the QR code. Uh, it's coming to the screen again in a moment. But also we have um, the, the table outside the lobby after the service if you want more information about it. This is an opportunity you do not want to miss. It's going to be phenomenal. It will be incredible. It will bless your life. Amen? Amen. Amen. Uh, how many of you have uh, children, grandchildren? You know some children that are in the uh, youth, high school, middle school age. Wave at me. Just wave at me real quick. Praise God. Praise God. Listen, the mashup is absolutely phenomenal. It's not just kids getting together, jumping around, just doing whatever. It is a moment where the kids get together and have fun, but it's evangelistic. We've had so many uh, uh, boys and girls from the neighborhood around us come to have a great time and then leave with Jesus. So I'm serious. 
we started with 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 I think the first you know maybe maybe 80 or 100 and so it's 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 going into the 300s y'all I'm not joking this is absolutely phenomenal the amount of kids youth that come here and gather it's phenomenal so if you want an opportunity to invite a if you have friends or 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 godchildren or someone that you've been like man how can I get them to come to church this is the moment this is the moment where they can come hang out have a phenomenal time there'll be food games and they will leave knowing Jesus amen Amen. So you want to be, make sure you avail yourself uh, to the matchup. Also, we have um, we have grief and loss. Now, I've had I've had multiple people come. I've, I've I've suffered multiple losses in my family. I think you guys know that. And sometimes it can be very difficult to move. It can be difficult to think just to get up. We have a phenomenal grief counseling center and and, and a group. It's phenomenal. So if you know anyone, if you're going through grief right now. You want to make sure that you don't miss this opportunity. In fact, you may just want to get this information to give to someone you know who's going through something right now. But I'm telling you, sometimes we, we, grief gets us because we get isolated. We, we're, we, we don't feel like we're alone. We actually isolate ourselves and we are alone. It can, become, it can become very, very dangerous and detrimental to our physical, emotional, and psychological health. And so in order to help us thrive, we have our grief uh, uh, opportunity available to you or family members or friends. Amen? Amen. Amen. Y'all, did we did we praise Jesus like <laughs> seriously, seriously, like we 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 praise Jesus all. Can you just give God a resurrection praise? I mean, my goodness. Listen, I want y'all to help me make as much noise as you can for every volunteer. I'm serious. All the volunteers help me praise God. That ain't loud enough, y'all. I'm serious. There, there is no way we could have had a resurrection experience like what we just had if it wasn't for the men and women who sacrificed their time. I'm serious. I'm serious. I, from the bottom of my heart, on, on behalf of Faithful Central Bible Church, our, our elders, our staff, I personally want to say thank you for every single one of you. Yvonne, you're talking about being here before four. They were here, somebody said early. They were, they were here early. You gotta say it twice early on Sunday morning. And I thank God for you. And 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 I wanna I wanna I also wanna add this. I'm not gonna say any names because then I'm gonna get in trouble. But when you go in the restrooms, somebody said they're spotless. When you go around the campus, what our campus looks like, help me praise God for our facilities team. I mean, I'm help me praise God for our facilities team. I'm serious, y'all. They hands down. The best kept secret here at Faithful Central Bible Church, our facilities team, they work, I mean, my goodness. They're here early in the morning going back and forth, and, and sometimes they're never even seen. But I, I've, I've received emails saying, Pastor, your, the campus, the facility team are doing amazing. I just want to praise God for them. I want to give you one more. We, we, we shouted uh, once for the Father, once for the Son. I got one more shout for the Holy Ghost. Over 217 people made a commitment to Jesus Christ. If you ain't got to shout, that's a good reason to shout right there. Over 217 in person, that's not counting online, made a commitment to Jesus. If you don't help me, praise God. Seriously, God is great. God is great, y'all. And I want to say thank you to everybody. I mean, everyone, everyone. I mean, our entire team. Yo, I can't say names because I'll get in trouble, but I'm a wave. Our team. I mean, everywhere. I, I, I'm going to just say this anyway because I can. Our, um, when we were rehearsing for, for Resurrection Sunday, I told the, the team, we had our choir, our praise team here, and, and I said there's a heaviness in here, and if we don't figure this out, we're going to miss the fact that what we're called to do is so one person can get saved. And to see what God did on Resurrection Sunday, we all pray. We, we stood here, right here, and we prayed as a team right here. And when I tell you God didn't just show up, God showed out. There was not one moment from that parking lot. I got to say Florence because it was a jam over there. I apologize. All the way to the sanctuary, God moved and lives were touched. Help me praise God one more time, y'all. Help me praise God. Now, the, 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 the choir, the choir is, is about to come, but we, this week has been a heavy week. We, we lost 
one of the great giants in Los Angeles, Pastor Reverend Cecil Chip Murray, passed away Friday at 94 years old. You, you can't even, you can, you, if you're a preacher or a pastor, you come to Los Angeles you don't, and you don't show this how God has used this man some respect and some acknowledgement. Y'all help me pray for the things he's done in the community, the things he's done. He's, he's helped so many pastors and churches and never wanted his name called. In fact, Bishop Omer actually mentioned how, how, how Reverend Pastor Chip Murray has blessed his life and the things he's done in Los Angeles. So we lost, we lost the giant, but guess what? His legacy continues to go on because of the amount of lives he has touched, not just in Los Angeles, but around the world. Can you just help me praise God for what he's done through Reverend Chip Murray one more time? One more time. I'm going to pray and then our choir is going to minister to us. God, we just, we pray over, over, over the uh, famed church, God, and just to, to all those who have been touched by Reverend Chip Murray, God, we ask that the heaviness of this loss, God, we ask that you would be the God of all comfort to comfort all of us in this time of need. Now, God, we ask that as his life is celebrated, that even in the mix of loss, you, God, can use this moment of celebrating a life to bring light to those who need to know Jesus Christ. Lord, we thank you for all that you have done through him. We thank you, God, for what you are going to continue to do through your church. We are yours. Comfort us and give us strength. In Jesus' name, amen. Good morning, Faithful Central. Anybody glad to be in the house of the Lord? One more time. If you're really glad, stand up and give them praise. We want to encourage you, no matter what you're going through or you're facing, stay with God. He's going to bless you. Stay with God in the midst of
Soldiers. General. At ease. Welcome to the war. This isn't conventional warfare, soldiers. This is the battleground of the unseen against the spiritual forces of evil in heavenly places where faith is exposed and fear is tested. But General, how do you fight what you can't see? We've trained for this, soldier. We have the tools if we choose to use them. Worship, fasting, fellowship, obedience, renewing our mind, sharing your testimony, the blood of Jesus, which will never, never lose its power. power. That is your offense. Never retreat. Truth, righteousness, peace, faith, salvation, the sword of the spirit, which is the, the word, word of God. God. That is your armor. Don't ever forget to put it on. <laughs> 
Just point me to the fight, General. Stay alert, sober-minded. The enemy does not sleep. He has a specifically designed, tailor-made plan with your name on it. Our mission is clear. Our enemy, formidable. But our victory is assured. Soldiers, prepare yourselves. This means war. Report. Tell your neighbor, this means war. They didn't believe you. Tell your other neighbor, this means war. Tell the person in front of you, suit up. <laughs> this means war. Suit up. You know, it's interesting. I, figure, I, I, I find it surprising that we choose God and then wonder why all hell breaks loose. We choose God and wonder why there's a battle and there's a war going on. But, but uh, I came to serve notice on the devil today that somebody let's go. I heard you. Let's go. We're going to suit up today in Jesus' name. The devil can bring whatever he wants to, but we're suiting up in Jesus' name. So, so I'm, uh, this series, first of all, I just want to let you guys know this. That the, if, if the sound, uh, the, the, the screams, anything goes crazy today, just know <laughs> it's spiritual warfare. We, we've already experienced it. Those of you visiting for the first time, God bless you. God bless you. I, I, I saw a lady over here visiting for the first time with her, with her baby. God bless you coming here at 7 o'clock in the morning with your baby. Come on, y'all. Baby in her arms. I'm here. I'm visiting. I, I met another lady from San Diego like at 614 in the morning, y'all. 614 from San Diego. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. God bless you. Thank you for being here this morning. But I came to tell, tell both of you, I came to tell us, we are in a spiritual battle against the enemy, spiritual warfare. And we're going to learn these next several weeks how it is we fight this good fight. How, how do we withstand the tricks, the traps, the schemes, and the attacks of the enemy? Now, there, there are some, some, some things I experienced were my fault. Nobody wants to pray with me now. Yeah, so, some, some things I've experienced, some of the hardship I've experienced, I did it. Those were the consequences of my bad choices. There are other attacks that because we bear the name of Jesus, the enemy's coming for you. And today we're going to learn how it is we can navigate through warfare. This means war. God, we thank you for your word. We ask God that your word does not go in one ear and out the other, but deep into our hearts to transform us into the men and women of God you've called us to be. Speak Holy Spirit words of life. God, in this hour, in this time, give us ears to hear and eyes to see. Lord, use everything in me, my success, my failure, anything you need to display your majestic glory. God, as the word goes forth, we ask that you would be glorified. We, your people, would be sanctified and the devil and the hell be horrified as the truth of your word is communicated. Now, God, transform our lives into the image of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We say this prayer in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. 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 If you have your Bibles, if you can go to Ephesians chapter 6. Ephesians chapter 6. Paul, Paul writes in Ephesians chapter 6, he, he writes this, this particular letter to a church in Ephesus, as he writes this letter, uh, Paul has this letter and he begins to, 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 to place for us the different things that we, we, we experience as believers. He, he goes on and he, he reminds us how it is we should live a life as a believer. He, he tells us how it is we should stand against the culture, how we uh, stand against the pagan lifestyle. And he does that in, in Ephesus. He also he, he reminds us as believers that we should not allow sin to remain among us. He, he goes on to say to us that as believers in Jesus Christ, that we should reflect the gospel of Jesus Christ. Not only should we reflect the gospel of Jesus Christ, but we should also reflect the character 
of the gospel. Paul goes on, if you continue to read it, he also mentions to us that we should do whatever we can to separate ourselves from darkness, from evil. Then he goes on in this particular chapter. In fact, his final exhortation or address or the way he implores us as believers, he tells us to take a stand. He says, whatever you do, take a stand. Watch this, because darkness or evil is still present. He reminds us in chapter six, he says, listen to me, I've expressed to you how it is we should live a, a, a lifestyle as a believer. But but I need you to understand this. Amongst those things, we are going to experience warfare because evil or darkness has not left us. It is still very present. And because it is, he pushes us or encourages is us to take action and he uses battle language. He uses battle terms or battle imagery to, to get us as believers to realize we must take action. Now, you can sit there if you want to. But there is an opposer who's acting as I'm speaking. And so we as believers, we must be ready to take action. In fact, he, he, he reminds us that this, this Christian lifestyle is not just love. It is not just joy. It is not just peace. It is not just patience. It is not just kindness. It is not just goodness. It's not just faithfulness. It's not just gentleness. It's not just self-control. It's not just community. It's not just worship. It's not just fellowship. It, it is not just prayer. Listen, being a believer also means you ought to be ready to fight. Let, 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 let me say this one more time. As a believer, it is not just love. It is not just joy. It is not just patience. It, it is not just goodness. It is not just kindness. Are you with me? Listen, as a believer, you ought to be ready to fight. Now, if you're not ready, I, I, I hate to tell you this morning, but I'm going to tell you anyway. A fight is coming to you. Now, now you want to take good notes because you're in three places. You're in a fight. You're going out of a fight or you're going into a fight. But I promise you, you, all, you need, we need to be ready to fight against the attacks of the enemy because they're coming. Paul reminds us, listen to me, the, 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 the gifts of the spirit, God bless you, you need them. How it is we behave amongst one another and how it is we behave with those in the world. They're important. But he will not end this letter without reminding you and I, you're in a fight. In, in, in fact, um, um, being a believer sometimes, somebody say sometimes. sometimes. Type it in chat, sometimes. sometimes. It feels like, you, you know, you're walking on the, in, on the beach in the summertime and with a cool breeze. It does, doesn't it? Come on, y'all, y'all, come on. Is, is there anybody blessed in here? Lord have mercy. Let, I'm going to talk to the people who just stood up for, for job check, right? When, when, when God blesses you with a new job, new business, new promotion, right? That moment, now, we're not going to talk about the hell it took that you have to go through to get there. But when you get there, you, there, there is a sense of, God has blessed me. It feels like we're walking. It's the summertime. You're walking on the beach, sand in between your toes with a cool breeze. Sometimes the Christian journey, we have seasons where it's just, God, God, God is so good. God is so good. Now, 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 those of us who are in the middle of a fight, we don't really want to see that smile too long. You got three seconds. Get that smile off your face. Anybody that happy? You don't know what I'm going through. <laughs> right? But so, so sometimes the Christian, the, as a believer, we walk in seasons where it's like, my goodness. Huh? <laughs> then there are moments as a believer where you are in a straight up dog fight. I, I, I mean, you are fighting every inch, every minute, 
every hour, every day, every week, every month, just to live and survive. Am I talking to myself? There, there, there are moments where, 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 where it's, it's going great, and there are moments where you got to take your earrings out. Guys, <laughs> take these bad boys off. <laughs> right? Fellas, there, there, you know what I'm saying? You got you to get as greasy as you can. Right? And take your position because you know you're in a fight. There are moments where, where listen to me, where it's, there's, there's no sunshine. You, you realize, oh, this is what, where, where, I'm in a fight. I'm fighting for my family. I'm fighting for my health. I'm fighting for my sanity. I'm fighting for my children. I'm fighting for my relationships. I'm fighting for my friendships. I'm fighting for my marriage. I'm, fight, I'm fighting just to have enough bread to get to tomorrow. Is there anybody in here that's going through it? That's, you've been through something. And there are seasons where it, it ain't walking through the beach today. No, 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 no. No, I came because I realized I'm under attack and I'm going to be ready to fight. And Paul says, listen to me, there's going to be moments where you better be ready to fight. Because the attacks of the enemy are coming. And Paul says this, listen, when we find ourselves in moments like this, Paul says, do me a favor, man. Hey, sis, can you do me a favor? What's up? Be strong. He says, he says be strong. Paul, Paul reminds us that when we go through, through, through seasons of hardship or suffering or spiritual warfare, Paul says, suit up. This, 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 isn't time, this is not time to play games. It's not, it's not t- you, you don't have time to sit down and figure out what happens. No, this is a season where you better suit up. You, th- you, you better be suited up. You better be, no, no, I'm not talking about when the attack comes. I'm talking about you need to be suited before the attack comes. Because the attack is coming. Paul says, suit up. Be ready. Be vigilant. Stay ready. So, y'all helping me preach this morning. So you ain't got to. Come on. Y'all, y'all, y'all know that theologian too, huh? Right? And in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10 says this to us. It says, finally. Stop. He's, he has gone through and, and explained to us how it is to live this life as a believer in Jesus Christ. And then in chapter 6, before he ends his letter, Paul says, finally. Finally, finally, be strong. Watch this. Be strong in the Lord. Watch this. And his mighty power. Watch out now. Verse 11. Put on the full armor of God, not some of the armor. Put on, watch this, the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against, watch this, the devil's schemes. Here, here, here it is. If you, please get this. Right, right down. You might want to write the whole verse 12 out. For our struggle is not. If you're taking notes, write not in capital letters. Our struggle, another translation says, our wrestle is not against flesh and blood. But the rulers against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces, watch this, of evil. Another translation says, uh, uh, spiritual forces of wickedness. Watch this, in the heavenly realm. Another translation says, the spiritual realm. Watch this, here it comes again. Therefore, put on the full armor of God. So that when the day of evil comes, watch this now, he didn't say if. <laughs> Go, rewind the tape. Rewind the tape. Put on the full armor of God so that when, not if, the day of evil comes, you may be able, here it is, to stand your ground. And after you've done everything you can do, stand. <laughs> now, 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 the, the scripture's preaching for itself, but here Paul reveals to us the reality of spiritual warfare. As believers, followers of Jesus Christ, he reveals to us that there is a battle, there is a fight, there is a war going on. And Paul reveals to us that in this struggle, 
he emphasizes, watch this now, that the struggle is not against flesh and blood. Now, when he, when he uses these, these, these words, flesh and blood, he's, he's basically practically saying it, your, your, your wrestle or your struggle or your fight is, is, is not flesh. It's not blood. It's not human. Your struggle, your wrestle, is not against the human. It's not against the person. Y'all not, not with me. Let me see if I can try it this way. Your, your fight is not against your neighbor. It's against powers and forces and evil and darkness in the heavenly realm. Your, your fight is not against your family member. It is against powers and forces and evil and darkness in the spiritual realm. Let's see if I can drive down your street. Your, your wrestle is not against your husband. Now I got to look up. <laughs> Somebody start the car. It's not against your husband. Got to keep looking up. It's against powers and forces and evil and darkness in the heavenly realm. Your fight is not against your wife. Got to keep looking up. It is against powers and forces and evil and darkness in the heavenly realm. Your fight is not against your ex. I think I'm in the living room. Forget the driveway. <laughs> it is against powers and forces and evil and darkness in the heavenlies. Your fight is not against your coworker. It is against powers and forces and evil and darkness in the heavenly. Y'all not with me? Your fight is not against your employer. It is against powers. Y'all might as well type this in the chat now. And forces and evil and darkness in the heavenly. Now here's how the devil distracts us. Because you're fighting a person. You, your fight, your frustration is with the person. But you have not realized in your mind yet that that person has allowed the enemy to use them. And you, you, you're fussing at them, arguing with them, and they've been employed by the devil. <laughs> Look, if, if you let the devil use you, he, you if you're on his, <laughs> you've been employed, some might argue, and deployed. And, and sometimes some of, the, some of the most frustrating seasons of my life is when I'm, there's so much tension with the person in front of me. And it, it, it didn't click till I realized, oh, the devil is using you. you you're, you're pushing every button <laughs> to get me to act outside of who I know I am. And, and, and you so happen to know which buttons to push to make me act outside of myself. In, in fact, you, the, the devil is using you so well that, that I, the, he, he, you, you didn't reach back and grab the old man. The old woman is starting to rise up because the way that you are talking to me right now, Lord have mercy, you have to be employed by the devil because you are trying to make me use all of the hell I let go of and lose all of the precious Holy Ghost. And I do not act like I have not responded like a child of God only to go off on you and be on my knees in prayer to God trying to figure out how in the world I behave the way that I behaved 
But I thought I was wrestling against flesh and blood, but I did not realize that the enemy was using you to push my buttons, and now the enemy has me on strings like a puppet, having me do things I normally wouldn't do because the old man has been that was buried has come back, and I'm cussing, and I'm fussing, and I want to give you all the business instead of all of the peace and the joy and the patience and the self-control because the devil will use flesh. The, the attack is not flesh and blood. The attack is powers and forces and evil and darkness in the heavenly realm. And, and if, I'm not, if I'm not careful in these seasons of my life, listen to me, I don't know who I'm saying this to, but I'm going to help you because this saved me. When some, listen to me, I'm, 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 being, I'm serious. When you feel, oh, hold on. Yourself reaching back. Pray as fast as you can. I'm just getting, li, listen to me. Because I believe you have more to lose than they do. And, and, and what the enemy wants to do is to get you to cause me to act outside of myself and all of the years and the, the tears and the sweat and the blood that brought me to this moment, God, the devil's going to use you to make me do some stuff I shouldn't do to lose everything that God has built because he's pushing the buttons in my life. I don't know who, I don't know who I'm talking to. Pray. Don't allow the enemy <laughs> to to cause you to mess up all that God has established in your life. It ain't worth it. In fact, sometimes the best thing you can do, fold your arms. Look, when you fold your arm, just rock back. and Look, look when grandma did it it, was, it, it was the precious Holy Ghost. Sometimes you don't have words. Sometimes you just got to rock back and forth. Listen, and, and then look, sometimes, she, look, give them the church finger. The way you're talking to me, I'm, I'm going to have a conversation with Jesus. I'm going to have, have a conversation with Jesus. He says, the fight is not against flesh and blood. It's not against flesh and blood. It's against powers and forces and evil and darkness in the spiritual realm. Watch this. Then he tells us, whatever you do, be strong. Yeah. Yeah. Now, now when, 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 when he said this to me, I was like, okay, now, now, I'm, now I'm, I'm seeing a picture because Paul uses three imperatives. First, first one he says, he says, be strong. Stand, then he says, put on. Let me, let, the, these are not suggestions. Let me just help you out. He, he's not suggesting, well, I think you should. No, he said, as a believer, it is imperative in order for you to have victory in this warfare that you be strong, that you stand and that you put on the full armor of God. And, and th this is when I learned suiting up requires strength. If you're taking notes, suit up. Suiting up requires strength. Verse 10 says, finally, be strong in the Lord, watch this, and his mighty power. Now, Paul, Paul uses Three imperatives. This is the first one. The first imperative he says is, be strong. If, if you want to be able to stand against the enemy, be strong. Now, th th this particular uh, word of, for, for, for be strong, it, 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 it got me. And it's going to bless us. Now, no, normally, normally, you, 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 you hear somebody say, be strong. You're like, oh, okay, all right, <laughs> all right. Paul, Paul, Paul is telling us, be strong. Right. It, I, I would think it means, look, muster up as much strength as you can. I, I, need, I need you to get some rest. I need you to lay down. I need you because because tomorrow when we go to battle, I need you to be as refreshed and as strong as you probably possibly can. Now, now I thought it I thought it meant um, whatever you do, bring as much power as you can to this warfare. Right. Uh, I thought it meant, you know, you know, when, when we when we go to battle tomorrow. Bring as much courage and boldness as you possibly could. Bring all of your might. 
I was like, okay, I'm going to bring all of my might to the fight. That's what I'm going to do. But, but, then I, but then I realized it, it, is, it is not bring strength. It is be in strength. <laughs> One more time. It, it, it's not, it, is not, it is not bring all the strength you can. It is have the wisdom to. Have the wit. Ha- have the spiritual discernment to make the choice to be in strength. Because the battle that's ahead of you, you don't have enough strength to win. So I don't need you to bring your strength. I need you to be sensible enough when you're in warfare to be in strength. Let me see if I can help you. Now, now but, uh, Pastor JP, for the next couple of weeks, he's going to be at home watching live. But Dr. Foster is going to be in the house teaching because we need to learn how to fight this battle in spiritual warfare. Now, you, you, we, learned, we learned a couple words last Sunday, right? We learned dunamis, dunamis, right? Dunamis, dunamis. Now, dunamis is power. We know that, right? Dunamis is power. It's power, right? Now, we, know, we learned last week that duna, dunamis means God, it's power that is able. Right. It's power that can. In other words, it is power that can accomplish whatever it attempts to do. God has all power so God can use his power whenever he wants to. And when he does, it will overrule or override anything that is in the way. Are you with me now? We learned dunamis. We learned duname. Now we're about to learn this word he uses. We read the Bible. You see power. You see power. You see power. You think it means the same thing. This particular word, it says, be strong. It, it's, the same, it's the same word, but it, it, it's, it's in dunamu. Dunamis, duname. Watch this, dunamu. Now, listen now. This means to be strengthened. This means to become strong. Are you with me? Now, what's interesting about this type of strength is this is not this is not this is not the strength that God had. God has dunamis dunamis. He has the power and the ability to do whatever he wants whenever he wants. Now, this, this type of strength is, is, is in the original language in Greek is a passive verb. Now, it's important that we know it's a passive verb because this type of strength is an empowering strength. In other words, this type of strength, it gives something the power that it needs to be victorious. This is the type of strength as believers that God gives us in order to win in warfare battles or fights. That when the attack of the enemy comes, God gives us the ability, watch this, that he enables us in duname, right, in dunamu, it is enabling strength. Y'all still with me? Now, what's interesting, this, this also empowering, it's in the continual tense, which means while I'm in this battle, I'm going to continue to need to be empowered by God in order to gain victory. So I'm in a fight. I'm in a battle. And, and I, throughout my spiritual journey, I'm going to continue to need to draw strength from God in order to overcome the attacks of the enemy. It, 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 is, not, it is not a, here's the power one, done, one and done. No. It means that as a believer, I'm going to have to continue to rely on the strength that only comes from God. Now, I can't win this fight with the strength that I possess. I know it. The devil knows it. You ought to know it. Now, in order for me to win this spiritual battle, this attack in my life, I have to have the sense. You, you, you can't win this battle with arrogance. You can't win this fight with pride. This fight is going to require you to say, Lord, I need you now. You, 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 if, you, if you can't humble yourself enough to call on the Lord in prayer, you ain't going to make it. That's bad English, but sometimes bad English makes good theology. Someone's in a fight right now. 
and and your 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 smarts, your 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 um, success continues to make you feel like I can work this out. I'm gonna find a way. No, no, just, get, just, I, just need, I just need some more time. Let me tell you something. If you don't have enough sense to call on Jesus. Now, you can call on him and try to work. But if you think you have the wit, the smarts, the ability, the power in and of yourself to make it through this spiritual battle, you won't make it. There, there are some battles, listen to me, that you, you will not make it through without the power of God. And this, this type of strength is an enabling strength. Lord, I don't have it. Lord, I'm, loo I'm losing my mind. Lord, Lord I, look, I, one more time, God. Yeah, anybody ever been there before? Where it was so dark. You, 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 I, I, I can't get up. You mean I got to get up again today and face this? It, I, I, I have to be enabled by God to withstand the attack. When now, now, you may never have had uh, an attack on your body before, your health. But there are moments where you, 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 start, you start questioning, well, Lord, how, how much longer? Now, the first how much longer was, Lord, how long is it going to take for you to show up? The second how much longer was, how long do I got to deal with this? Now, the, 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 the third how much longer is, Lord, I don't, I don't have too much more time that I can live under this type of pressure. And in those moments, I have to be uh, smart enough, aware enough to draw strength when, from God. Listen, there, there, are, there are men and women in this room who, have, who the, the, they, have, they have had a spiritual attack on their bodies. And it was nothing but the power of God that pulled them through. There, there were many moments you didn't even know if you would make it. You, you didn't even know if your body would respond to what your mind was trying to tell it to do. But when you called on the strength that only comes from God, he gave you the ability to say, you know what, God? I'm going to stand up one more time and trust you. You know what, God? I'm going to believe in you, God. You know what, God? I need you to increase my faith. I need you to increase my hope. I need you to increase my ability to keep moving forward. Some of you, we, we've had attacks on our entire livelihood. Everything. Everything. God, God, you've given me stewardship over this, over that, and over this, and over that. This, that, this, this, and that. And, and, and now it looks like I'm losing this, that, this, this, and that. And, and, and the enemy will have you feel like a failure, like, like a loser. Like, well, what's the point? But what, uh, then they had you do this. Thing. Does God actually love you? With, with a loving God. Allow, you better call on some strength. Because in the battle, you need strength that only comes from God. Lord, I need you to give me the strength, the power that it takes to make it through this battle. Now, now not only do I, do I need to suit up, and the suiting up requires strength. Listen to me. In spiritual warfare, we have to go through the battles, go through the attacks, knowing that our power source is God. Okay? When you do not any longer have the mental capacity to deal with the weight that you are standing under, go to God for his enabling strength. All right? Now, suiting up requires us to pull on God's strength. Suiting up also requires us, watch this now, to stand. Suiting up requires you to go into the battle, drawing from, pulling from the strength of God. Amen. It also requires me and you, us, to take a stand, to stand. Now, verse 11 says this. It says, put on the former of God, watch this, so that you can take your stand against the evil schemes. Here we go. Watch this. Suiting up requires us to stand. Now, the word of God says that 
We are to stand. Why? I need you to stand against the evil schemes of the devil. Another translation says, I need you to stand against the schemes of the devil. Another translation says, the wiles of the devil. Another translation says, to stand against the craftiness of the devil. Another one says, to stand against the bewitching of the devil. Right? Now, it's interesting because the word of God says, I'm not just standing on the battle line. I'm not just standing to stand. I'm standing against something. What am I standing against? I'm standing against the schemes of the devil. All right? Because one of his attacks is to use schemes. And Paul highlights in this passage that you and I must take a stand against them. What am I taking a stand against? The schemes. Well, pastor, what are schemes? I'm glad you asked. Watch. Schemes are... The crafty scheming with the intent, watch this now, to deceive. One more time. The scheme is, watch this, it's, his, it's the devil's, the enemy's craftiness. How crafty is he? He's so crafty that his intent is to deceive you. Are you with me? So scheming is, it's his intent to deceive. Now, he, he, he mentions to us uh, schemes of the devil because it highlights the trickery and the deception of the evil one. Now, what he does is he tries to tempt us, right? And, and what he does is he, 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 he twists or changes what evil actually looks like. Now, evil rarely looks like what it looks like <laughs> until it accomplishes its goal. Its goal was to deceive you, to tear you down. Now, now, it, 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 the enemy, he will bait you with a scheme that's called deception. And what he'll do is he'll camouflage a, a trap. So he, he, he'll, he'll, Make evil, come on, look real good. In fact, what the devil will, will do is he'll dress up evil. <laughs> now I'm in trouble. <laughs> the enemy dresses up evil. How does he do it? Well, Second Corinthians teaches us this. It says, Second Corinthians 11 says this, 11, 13 says this. It said, for such people are false prophets or false apostles, deceitful workers, watch this, masquerading about as apostles of the church or apostles of Christ. Watch this. And no wonder. For Satan himself masquerades as an angel of light. Watch this. Now, another translation says he masquerades himself or disguises himself as an angel of light. Hold on. Now, He's disguising himself as an angel of light. He is not an angel of light. Are you with me? Now, he, he'll come to you as darkness, dressed up as light. <laughs> the enemy comes to you as darkness, but he dresses up darkness as light. It isn't light, but as light. Because his goal, watch this now, his goal in dressing up evil and making it look good, or dressing up darkness and making it look like, look like light, is he knows that that's the only way he can gain entrance into your life. One more time. He has to make evil, darkness, look attractive, in order for you to open the door and let him in. Because if he came at your door and said, hey, I'm the devil, I want to destroy your life. I bind you in the name of Jesus. But, but if he comes up to you like, how you doing? 
Hey, how you, how you doing tonight? I just want to know. Hold on now. Right? He dresses up evil and makes it attractive enough. Hey, man, I, I, I can help you make some money. Huh? Pray tell. Because he'll dress up evil to make it attractive enough for you to let it in. Now, he doesn't dress, he, he dresses up evil. Now, um, you, you, you guys know, uh, the, you've heard of, of, of the Trojan horse. Now, the reason why the, the, the Trojan horse was, was able to get in is because it masqueraded around like light. And it, it wasn't until this Trojan horse came in as a peace offering. Right? It, it, it didn't come in looking like war. It, they didn't, the, the horse didn't come in with, with a speaker saying, we're coming in to kill you. The horse didn't come in saying, I'm coming to destroy your whole life. The horse didn't come in saying, I'm coming in and when I do, I'm going to wreck your whole family. The horse didn't come in and say, when I come in here, I'm going to wreck your marriage. The horse didn't come in and say, when we get in there, I'm, you won't even recognize yourself when I'm finished with you. The, the horse didn't come and say, look, you, I, I'm going to bring so much darkness into your life, masqueraded as light, that when you look in the mirror, you won't even recognize you. He didn't come in and say, when I get through with you, I'll make sure that you don't have any money left. He didn't come and say, when I'm finished with you, I promise you, you'll be an addict. He didn't come and say, when you get in here, I promise when I come in, I'm going to make sure you leave drunk. He didn't come in and say, when, when I get through with your life, you, you, your friends and family members won't even know who you are. When, 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 I, when this relationship is over, you won't even know how to find the pieces of the heart that's going to be broken. It came in as a peace offering, disguised as light. That's the only reason why they let it in. And when they let the horse in, it destroyed everything that was on the other side of the wall. The enemy is coming. You heard of a, a, a devil in a blue dress? The, 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 the devil wears Prada? Louis, Gucci, all of them. Listen, the, the, the devil is coming. And he's going to look like whatever you like. And after you've let him in, his primary goal will be to wreck our entire lives. And the word of God says, listen to me, this is why you got to suit up. Suit up. So that you can take a stand against the tricks and the schemes of the enemy. We, we, the enemy's coming and his goal is to make sure that he gets a way in. And the next thing that Paul says in Ephesians 6 is, stand your ground. And, and, and do me a favor, while you're standing your ground, put on the full armor of God. Suit up. What, 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 why do we need to suit up? Because the enemy is coming. He's coming for me, and he's coming for you. And the word of God says, I need you to walk in the power that you can draw from me. Then I need you to stand your ground. And don't put on some of the armor, put on the full armor of God. When the enemy comes to attack your life, put on the, put on the, the, the belt of truth. Put on the breastplate of righteousness. Put on the shoes of the gospel of peace. Put on the shield of faith. Put on the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. And do me a favor, can you pray? Because when the attacks of the enemy come upon our lives, we got to know at least three things. One, devil, come if you want to. But I know there's some strength 
that I can get from God, then the next thing I ought to make sure I do is realize if I ever get weak in my battle, God can give me strength. When my mind gets weak, God give me strength. When my body gets weak, God give me strength. When everything around me seems to be collapsing, God give me strength. Then he says, and take a stand. Devil, I don't care what you bring towards me. I'm standing on the word of God. I'm standing on the truth of God. I'm standing by faith and not by sight. I'm standing and I ain't going nowhere. I'm going to put on my belt of truth. I'm going to put on the breastplate of righteousness. I'm going to put on the shoes of the gospel. I am going to put on the shield of faith. And I promise you, I'm bringing the sword of the spirit. Every single word that is in the Bible, I'm standing on it. I came to tell somebody today, the enemy is coming for you. Watch this now. But another word for the power is mighty power. I saved it for last, y'all. He says, call on the Lord. Listen, stand in the Lord's power and his mighty strength. Now, the word mighty strength means known power. Oh, I'm about to start preaching. It means power that is known. I can't draw from power that I don't know. Now, I, I, I messed around and, I, and, I, and I, uh, I charged the car. The guy was telling me, hey, you know, I just looked at my, at my phone and I'm looking at the battery. And it tells me the amps. The amps is like around 22 or 25, right? Now, I did not know the amount of power that was available to me. The guy takes the app and says, hey, you do know that you can move this dial right here and you can get 40 amps at one time. I said, what'd you just say? He said, your car is not charging at the rate it should because you have the amps too low for where you're going. I'm about to start preaching right now. You can't go anywhere until the battery is fully charged, but you only have half the capacity of charging speed because you have not moved the dial from 20-something to 40. I came to tell somebody today, you better know the power that you have that's available to you. What kind of power is it? It's power that can pull a dead Jesus out of a borrowed tomb. It's power that can jump in a fiery furnace and you will not be consumed. It's power that can jump into a lion's den and the lions will not devour you. It's power that can walk on water. It's power that can calm a storm. It's power that can say, Lazarus, come forth. And Lazarus, you got to come forth. It's power that can heal a dead baby. It's power that can make the blind see. It's power that can make the lame walk. It's power that demons have to flee. I came to tell somebody today, I'm pulling on the power of God. When you go to war, this means war. Well, I got power. I got power that you don't know. Is there at least four people that can help me testify? I know the power of God. Power, power, power. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. I came to tell you, in the middle of your war, you got to have enough memory to remember what God's already done. God, you've already healed my body. You've already put food on my table. You've already blessed my children. If you did it then, I believe you can do it again. Is there anybody in here with a testimony that God pulled me through? And if God blessed me back there, I'm trusting God to bless me down there. Because the same faith that I was walking by back there is the same faith I need as God leads me over there. So while I'm standing right here, I'll stand in prayer. I'll stand by the power of the Holy Ghost because the devil doesn't want you to go down there. But I came to tell you this morning, by the power of God, by the faith of God, we going down there, Faithful Central Bible Church, because the devil messed around and made me read Ephesians 6. Is there anybody in here willing to suit up, put on the full armor of God? Is there anybody in here willing to give God praise for about four seconds? Because I'm not where I'm going, but I'm not where I used to be. And the same God that brought me here is the same God that's going to take me down there. Help me praise God one more time. It ain't over until God says it's over. Somebody help me praise God for three more seconds because I still got my right mind. Somebody help me praise God for two seconds because there ain't no quit in me. Somebody help me praise God for one more second because I'm standing suited up, ready for battle. Somebody say, this means war. This 
means war. This means war. But I'm suited up. I'm suited and booted with the gospel on my feet, ready to walk in righteousness and get victory in Jesus' name. Help me praise him. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Listen to me. I prayed last night, and, and I got clear instructions from God. If you are under spiritual attack, we're going to pray right now. If you are under spiritual attack, spiritual, if, you, if you are under warfare as I'm speaking, meet me right here. I want the, the prayer warriors, the elders, everybody to come. We're going to pray. We're going to pray today. If you are under attack, we're going to pray. Yes, we are. We're going to pray. We, 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 we know where our strength comes from. We, we know we're going to take it. I'm standing my ground. We're going to call on Jesus to push us through. Pastor, Pastor Bob Gay is going to pray for us. And, and, and he leads our men's ministry. He personally prays for me and has encouraged the champion men to pray for me, my wife, and my children. And I'm going to ask Pastor Bob Gay, the man who prays over the church, my family, to pray for us as we push through spiritual warfare and the attacks of the enemy. Pastor Bob, would you? Let's bow our heads. Everybody in the house, no onlookers, focus your attention directly on the God of heaven and earth. Eternal God, our Father, we thank you so much for gathering us together in this place. Father, we thank you for what you're doing in our lives. We thank you, Father, for our salvation, for our deliverance from sin. We thank you for our position, Lord God, that we're seated with Christ in heavenly places. We thank you that we have the mind of Christ and hold the thoughts, the feelings, and purposes of your heart. We thank you that you have handcrafted us for this age and for this season, that you have empowered us, that you've called us, you've given us purpose, Lord God, in the kingdom of God. We thank you, Lord God, that you have reached deep into the recesses of our hearts and our minds and have spoken your salvation, your deliverance, and your eternal life into our spirits and into our souls. Father, there is no demon that has come out of hell that will take over and overtake what you have given us because your power is complete. Your ability is complete. Your enablement is complete. Father, there is no plan, no scheme of the devil, no old memory, no old sin that will grip us and hold us and take us back to the pit of hell. Father, we confess the word of God over this congregation and this house right now that we are free. We are emancipated, Lord God. We have liberty and we walk into it because of Jesus Christ, his death on the cross for his rising from the grave. He led captivity captive out of hell. He rose into heaven. He's seated at the right hand of the Father and we are seated with him in heavenly places. So Father, we will no longer contend with the devil as if we are contending with human flesh. But Lord God, we call upon the word of God, the very power of God, the essence of God. We call upon the very bread of life. We call upon Jesus Christ who is the desire of all nations, Lord God, to give us spiritual water in this hour to refresh our spirits and refresh our souls. Father, we thank you 
We thank you. We thank you for the word of God that lives big on the inside of us. We rise up now, Lord God, having put on the full armor of God. We rise up believing, Lord God, that it is you who stands on the inside of us, who fights what is on the outside of us. So, Father, we commit ourselves to a life of victory, to a life of championship, to a life as overcomers, because we've overcome by the blood of the Lamb, by the word of his testimony, and we love not our lives even under the death. So, Father, there is no fear that shall overtake us, nothing that will grip us. So, Father, we now walk in great confidence that, Father, there's nothing the devil can do that will harm us. But, Father, that you, O oh God, through Christ Jesus, our Savior and our Lord, have given us all things in your kingdom. And so, Father, we embrace that. We bless it. And now, God, we speak the word of God everywhere we go. We pray in the spirit, Lord God. We now speak in the spirit, Lord God, and we have all that you've desired for us. We thank you for it now. We bless you for it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, 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 Jesus. Everybody, everybody standing. Everybody standing, everybody standing. Everybody standing. Anybody been blessed? few things I want to share with you before we go. Um, first thing I want to share with you is um, if you want to make a decision to re rededicate your life or to have a relationship with God, our ministers will be here at the end and we also have our cards you can scan. Also, we, I, I don't want you to miss this. On social media, our team is going to do our very best to bring, to give you practical tools to walk through spiritual warfare and, and hardship. And so one, on social media, we'll be sending, sending, sending uh, stuff out. Also, uh, I'll give you the day that it's gonna air. On, on Wednesday night, we're gonna go through the armor of God explaining to you the importance of each one, all right? So it'd be, and it'd be on Wednesday night at seven, it'd be streaming live, stream, streaming live, you can watch it uh, live uh, on the stream. I wanna make sure we have practical steps. The first thing is, we need to know that we're in a war. And the enemy is coming for us and he, he disguises himself. So as believers, you and I have to be able to make the decisions and have discernment in what is a wolf, a sheep in wolf's clothing. We have to be able to, to know the difference. Here's another thing. You have to know you because the enemy is going to come. It's not temptation if you don't like it. <laughs> so he's going to bring to you what you like to see if you'll open the door. And we have to stand our ground against the enemy because he uses decep deception to attack us. Are you with me? Let's pray for God's grace upon us. God, we thank you for your grace and mercy. I ask God that you watch over every single person in this space and cyberspace. I ask right now, God, that your hand would cover us and protect us. I ask God that the Spirit, the Holy Spirit would empower us to live out this Christian journey. Lord, we also ask that your word would be a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path, that we live according to your ways and your will and your word. And God, we ask that as we leave this place or we log off, we ask God that your light would shine so great that when people see our good works, they'll glorify you, our Father in heaven. We say this prayer. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen and amen. I love you, family. Be blessed. Be blessed. God bless you.